who doesn't hate to see the arms bend excessively in their golf swing, especially during and after impact. While there are certainly great advantages to a good arm structure, I see many, many golfers ruining their swing by forcing the arms to be straight. They just don't know the root causes and so at best don't really succeed at improving their arm structure but potentially really lose their swing, their game and even injuring themselves. So let's take a deeper look at what really needs to happen in order to improve the arm structure and the golf swing. Let's go! Just to be clear, we don't want both arms to be straight uh, all the time in the golf swing. The trail arm should bend to around 90 degrees at the end of the backswing. It will then start straightening throughout the downswing and will reach its straightest point after impact, let's say around P8, which would be shaft parallel to the ground in the follow through or even a little bit later. But um, that's definitely a good visualization. And the lead arm should not be completely hyperextended. The lead arm should remain fairly straight, definitely in the backswing and the downswing, even a little bit in the follow through. But we don't want hyperextension. We don't want to really lock the elbow. We don't lo want to lock the shoulder joint. We don't want to tighten up all of our body because of that. So a few degrees of bend are also absolutely fine. What are the advantages of a good arm structure or the disadvantages of a poor arm structure? Bending the arms excessively will lead to definitely a loss of club head speed and thus loss of distance. It will also be much more difficult to manage the arc height. Bending the arms will lead to the fact that the club head comes uh, off the ground. It will lead to thin shots because of that and also potentially toe shots. You can see the club head comes closer to my body. Furthermore, bending the arms excessively will always also affect the wrist structure. I will have more of this scooping look and because the wrists break down, I will definitely have much more um, trouble controlling the club face and uh, also because of that, the direction of the golf ball. So plenty of reasons to improve the arm structure. Let's dive uh, deep into how we can achieve that. In order to maintain a good arm structure in the backswing, two things need to be in place. A solid movement of the body and the correct movement of the trail arm. So many golfers only look at their lead arm, but the reality is that the trail arm is responsible for straightening the lead arm. This is extremely important to understand. The trail arm pushes the lead arm straight. The trail arm should bend to about 90 degrees throughout the backswing as we discussed. The feeling is the trail arm almost resists to this bending and by that is basically pushing away from the body, pushing this way and by this pushing force it's straightening the lead arm. So many golfers do the opposite, they pull their trail arm, pull their trail arm behind them. And by doing that, there's definitely no possibility to exert this force. And naturally, the lead arm now has to bend. If I don't bend the lead arm, I would have to let go of the club, which I uh, obviously don't want. So the position of the trail arm is extremely important and only by the correct movement, by this pushing away, the lead arm can be straight. And it is extremely important, as I said, to not hyperextend the left uh, arm or the lead arm, to not try to force them straight, but do the correct movement with the trail arm and also do the correct movement with the body. The body basically needs to counteract this force away from us. And it's doing, the body is doing that by not only implementing turn to the backswing, but we also have two major other uh, components of the backswing, which is a tilting to my left as a right-hander and also a extending of the body of the spine. And these movements at the end of the backswing are basically, I'm, I'm exaggerating here a lot, they are basically a force to my left and this pushing away with the right arm, with the trail arm, is a force to the right. 
and this creates a really nice equilibrium and a really nice balance, balancing act, a force to the left with the body, a force to the right with the right arm. And so we can stay really nice and centered throughout the backswing. Furthermore, the body also needs to have the proper movement because if I only turned, if I also have a very short backswing, obviously I need to bend the arms quite a bit to have some sort of length to the backswing and some sort of possibility to hit the ball a certain amount of distance. So we also need obviously a good pivot to not only balance this force away from us, but also have by the body the possibility to get the arms in the correct position and hit the ball the uh, yeah, best distance for us. How do we achieve a good arm structure in the follow through? As you might have guessed by now, it does not and should not come from the attempt to keep the arms straight. First, we have to understand that many golfers have to bend the arms during the impact and follow through area in order to achieve certain things. And if they did not bend the arms, they would play much worse. What are they trying to achieve? One very common uh, thing is the fact that many golfers try to shallow um, the angle of attack out. If you're coming down very steep, that would create an intense momentum of the club head into the ground. And bending the arms can definitely help shallowing this intense momentum into the ground out and so they can avoid hitting extremely deep divots extremely into the ground. The second thing is that many golfers have their low point of their swing arc way too far back. And this would mean they would hit the ground too early, would have fat shots which will come, uh, come way short. And in order to avoid that, they bend the arms, they avoid hitting the ground at all, so they will have a lot of thin shots, which is also not ideal, obviously, but still a little bit better than hitting the ground and these fat shots all the time. The last thing I want to mention is the fact that many golfers also have an open club face in their swing, and they try to close this club face by having this scooping motion, by uh, letting the club head overtake the hands quite a bit. And this is also not really possible with arms straight. So if you want to, obviously that's a little bit unconscious, but players that are trying to close the face by scooping, they definitely also have to, be, uh, to bend the arms a little bit in order to achieve this more closing of the club face. So let's assume you have a reasonable plane in the downswing, a reasonable low point and a reasonable club face orientation in the downswing. How can you, can you achieve this good arm structure in the impact area and into the follow through? Again, we need the correct movement of the body. First, we need a decent amount of rotation. So many golfers, as we discussed, come down rather steep in the downswing and now they have to stop the body rotation because rotating further would uh, lead to the fact that the club is getting steeper and steeper and now they stop the body rotation in order to shallow the club a little bit out which actually makes sense in that case and actually helps them to hit more decent shots but not enough body rotation will make it physiologically impossible to maintain a good arm structure. Only if I have enough rotation, it is possible to keep the arms straight or straightening towards P8, as we discussed. And a lack of rotation will always lead to a collapsing of the arm structure. Trying now to keep the arms straight or to straighten the arms will actually definitely not lead to better golf shots and even the risk of uh, injuries. So we definitely don't want that. We also need a, a good amount of extension, which is maybe even more important than rotation. What do I mean by that? The straightening of the arms into the follow through and the centrifugal force of the club head are obviously forces towards the target away from me. 
and we need to balance also here these forces out and we do that by extending our body and the extending of our body the extension of the spine is actually a force away from the target so many golfers are not extending enough and if i don't extend into my in the follow through into the finish if i look like this i'm exaggerating here a little bit but you can see lack of extension and now trying to keep the arm straight actually i would lose my balance i would fall off and obviously the brain does not allow that and it is actually a much better concept that this extension and the centrifugal force of the club head is basically pulling the arms straight so as we already discussed we don't really ever want to try to force the arms straight somehow but if i just let the momentum of the club take over use the centrifugal force and also extend my body in the correct way then really my arms are really like basically pulled this way and if i don't let go of the club the arms will get pulled straight i'm not forcing the arms to straighten but the correct turn and extension of the body combined with the centrifugal force of the club basically pull the arms straight without me trying to do so and this will then also lead to maximum club head speed and maximum control and if i tried to force the arms somehow i would definitely lose a lot of that now i will give you a few ideas that you can also practice in order to improve your arm structure and ball striking first you pick an alignment rod and place it on the ground like so you basically have your normal golf grip you place the alignment rod to your right as a right hander and then you pull it along the ground into this position and you basically only use rotation and extension of your body to bring the alignment rod into this position and you can see that my arms i'm not trying to get my arms straight by by the proper turning and extending of my body we can see a really good arm structure here the next idea sounds a bit crazy and looks a bit crazy but i've seen even two pros really benefit from this exercise and the exercise is actually tossing throwing the club mm, towards the target and uh, this uh, throwing motion is very very intuitive and uh, here we will intuitively have the proper turning of the body we will have the proper extending of the body in order to propel the club head or the club uh, a long ways and it's actually not that easy to throw the club pretty straight and pretty far it might go like really far to the left or really high but not really straight and uh, really try to um, be able to toss the club uh, quite far and straight and you might even videotape yourself doing that and you will see that your body and your arm structure uh, look really good and the golf swing is not only similar it's basically the exact same movement that we want to achieve in the golf swing after tossing the club a few times towards the target you can do the exact same movement but instead of letting go you just hold on to the club but it's the exact same movement as if you would toss the club towards the target and exactly this feeling we will now implement into real shots we will now hit balls you can use a tee if you want and use a mid iron start with maybe 50 or 60 percent of your normal speed the task is to achieve a certain finish position the finish position should look like this that the arms are completely straight in the finish position and my body is turned towards the target you can see that my belt buckle my chest and my knees are pointing towards the target at the finish position where both arms are straight and the right arm is right around par parallel to the ground and at this position 
the body is turned in the way we just discussed. Furthermore, you can see my body is extended. You can see that the belt buckle is basically the closest point towards the target um, with my body. You can see that this would be a uh, not very well extended position. This is the properly extended position. The weight is on the left. And if you achieve this finish position, we can be sure that also your arm structure was uh, definitely very good through the hitting area and also into the follow through. You can definitely also use this feeling of tossing the club that we just um, learned. Once you get a good feeling for this finish position and you get a good feeling for the strike and hit the balls uh, well, then you can definitely start increasing the speed uh, up to 100% of your normal speed. But still with that finish position we were talking about, obviously with a full speed, I will my arms will not be parallel to the ground, but a little bit further up here, but the feeling will be exactly the same. And you will uh, definitely feel a lot of control, a very penetrating ball flight. Uh, you will definitely feel that also the body needs to be more active, needs to work a lot more than before in order to facilitate this good arm structure. And um, it's definitely not nothing that you need to be uh, worried about in terms of like injuring your body. Definitely more the contrary, but it's definitely very yeah difficult like a little gym session. You will maybe even feel your muscles the next day a little bit. So I hope this uh, helped. If you have any questions about the video, about the topic, feel free to post them in the comments down below. Maybe even share this video with your friends. See you next time.